Hey, this is Safi Wai from LinkedInF.com and it's time for another viewer request. And in this video, I'm going to teach you a finger style arrangement. I've made especially for you guys and girls of Randy Newman's You've Got a Friend in Me from the movie Toy Story. First, I'm going to play it for you so you can see and hear how it goes. And then we're going to break it down lick by lick with tabs on the screen and everything. So without further ado, it goes like this. So as you've seen, this is a jazzy blues in E. So the chords you're gonna need for this are E major, G sharp major, okay, on four, below it or above it pitch wise, uh, but below it physically on the strings, C sharp minor. We're gonna have B seven. We're gonna have A and A over B flat, meaning that you play an A chord, but you uh, but you play it with a B flat bass, one on the A string. Okay. Okay. In this movement, for example, uh, we're gonna have F sharp seven over C sharp, uh, which is just a fancy name for an F sharp seven chord. Um, it's F sharp on two, take the bar off, put your, uh, your first finger back on the second string on the second fret with the E string open, making this an F sharp seven, but it doesn't have the F sharp bass anymore, so it's got the C sharp bass. So that's why this is F sharp seven over C sharp, because it's got a C sharp on the bass. That's it. It's just F sharp seven over a different bass note. Um, and the last chord is no, it's not the last chord. Excuse me. There's another chord in the B part. Um, you've got C sharp seven in this shape. It's just C seven up one fret. Okay, with the bass on four, first finger on two, and you've got. D flat, uh, D sharp seven, which is this. Okay, it's D seven up one string, and you add your first finger on the D string on one for a D sharp bass. Okay, that's it. Those are the chords: E, A, A over B flat, B seven, F sharp seven over C sharp. C sharp seven, C sharp minor, G sharp, and D uh, D sharp seven. Let's begin. Um, you're also going to need to know the Travis picking technique, um, and this is not the time to teach it. Uh, I've got a finger uh, style, a finger style Travis picking um, 
lesson so you can go watch it. If you don't know how to Travis pick, Travis picking is this, keeping the thumb going uh, all the time, keeping rhythm, keeping one, two, one, two, one, two, rhythm. Um, if you don't know how to do it, I suggest first you learn the melody, you learn, um, okay, and um, Without the alternating bass notes and then learn Travis picking and then practice it. Don't practice everything at once. Um, you're gonna know uh, need to know Travis picking and that's it. Let's begin. Uh, e major, just the E chord. You play this. Now we're playing the intro. It's this. Okay. played slowly so it begins on E and ends on E now you play the bass note then strings three two one just an E arpeggio then you play two on the E string you add it with your pinky okay so it's okay and into an E add nine for a second there E add nine shape. It's still an E chord. Uh, the F sharp note is the melody note. So then you do this. Okay? You put your second finger on G sharp, the bass, on four, on the E string, the E bass, and on the high E string, you put on three, the G note, with your first finger. So it's G and G sharp and you play them together, and then you uh, play a G-sharp note on the high E string on four, okay? So it's an approach note, it's G to G-sharp. And then you put this on, C-sharp on the A bass, it's again on four, it's below G-sharp, and uh, below, again, physically, it's higher, a higher note, pitch-wise. I like to refer to the strings and not to the music. Um, now, because it's easier, the guitar is a physical instrument. Uh, if we were playing saxophone, I would say it's a higher note. You, put, you play higher. But now, when I say below it, I mean downwards physically on the strings, okay? So don't get confused. Um, C sharp on four on the A string with your third finger. First finger on the second fret on the second string, okay, playing another C sharp note, a higher C sharp note, so it's a C sharp octave. You play the open E string, then the A string, then the B string, okay, so it's first string, fifth string, second string, and then it's this, okay. It's both uh, second and third fingers on three on the E string and the A string, the, the high E string, okay? So it's, it's just a low C and a high G, okay? And then you play two on the E string, okay? So it's G to G sharp, uh, to G to F sharp. Um, notice that the melody uh, just a minute before, a minute, it was less than a second ago when you play it fluently, was G to G sharp, now it's G to F sharp, so it's chromatic, it's a jazzy uh, flavor. So, okay, you play them together and then you play the F sharp note. And then you do E again and you play the E string, the E bass, then uh, I play both B and G strings. You can just play the B string if you want. Okay, or doesn't matter. I like to harmonize with the G string whenever I can. That's just my little trick of harmonizing stuff. I harmonize with the G string a lot. <coughs> there are many jokes you can make here. Please don't. Um, and then it's this. 
Okay, it's just C sharp, uh, C sharp. It's just C seven. I got confused with this. I showed you earlier. So it's C seven into B seven. Okay, I did not mention the C seven chord because it's because it's a melody chord. Um, it's not supposed to be a <clears throat> excuse me. It's not supposed to be a C seven chord. I just arrange it like that. Uh, the melody is. Okay, it's on B7, but I, I just took it uh, and made a blues movement out of it because um, the song is composed as a blues. So on guitar, it sounds better than doing this. Okay, this, this is not the chord we're going for. Uh, this is a B, um, B major 7, and <clears throat> it's supposed to be a B7 chord. So it's, this sounds better than this. Okay, because major 7 is mellow, 7 is really tough, um, so this doesn't work. This works, okay, because it's a cliche, it's a blues cliche, that's why Randy Newman used it. Um, when it's played with flutes and the piano, it works. When it's played only with one instrument, it doesn't. So, um, we were here. Then C7, you just pick the D, A, and G strings. And then same thing, back one fret to B7. And then I do this. Um, okay, you don't have to, that's just the way I play it. Uh, the E chord again. I pick the bass along with the G string and I hammer on the first fret, okay, on the G string, and then I play the D string, and then I play the E string, okay, so it's... Now, um, I don't like the next little lick. So <clears throat> I don't I when I play it I don't um, I don't play the next lick, but it's on the original song, again played by flutes. So when it's played by flutes, it sounds good. When it's played on guitar, not so much in my opinion. But I'm going to teach you anyway because you asked for this arrangement, so it's a full arrangement. Um, something like that. Um, I haven't found a way to make it sound good, as good as the full uh, orchestral arrangement goes. But it's just, again, a simple chromatic blues lick. Um, this is E. If you take D to uh, 4 instead of 2, it's E. And then it just takes it down one fret, and then down another fret, and then up one fret. So it's D on 4, then on 3, then on 2, then on 3. Um, I don't think it sounds too good on guitar, so I leave it out. I play this. And I play the rest of the bar on E. Now you can play it. If you find a good way to play it, then go ahead. So uh, you can play this. Um, See why I don't like it. it? Doesn't sound good. When the flutes play it, it sounds fine. I don't know. I, I don't think it sounds too good. You can go back to E, the D on four, if you want. That kind of solves it. But that's not the original uh, melody. The original melody ends on E flat, on the E flat chord, just hinted by the flutes. Okay, I prefer to go back to E if I play it. Now, let's play the entire, um, the entire intro and then move on to the verse, to the A part.
so E, G sharp bass, C sharp bass, C bass, E, C7, B7, E. Okay, you can play the E like this if you want. You can uh, leave the D string out of this. Just a simple country blues lick. Um, remember, this is the way I play it. You can play whatever you want. I'm just showing you the notes. You take them and do whatever the heck you want. It's your arrangement from now on. Um, all right, now let's play the, the A part. It goes like this. Seven E. So on E, the melody is very simple: G string, B string, G string. Okay. Now along with the bass notes, that's it. Okay. Just sounds a bit fuller. And with one bass note, it sounds fine. And then B seven. But the pinky is on the second string on the second fret. So technically you're playing a B9, a B a jazz B9 with the seventh note. So it's a jazz uh, ninth chord. It's you can call it B79 if you want. Okay, you play all four notes: uh, second string, third string, fourth string, and fifth string. Then open B string. Then back to E, and you play the lick you played in uh, at the, the end of the intro. Okay, very simple. It's E, B seven, B nine. I say nine with the little bunny ear motion because uh, technically it's B seven. The nine is the melody note, and then E. Now it's this. Okay? It's A, and you play um, second string, first string, second string. Again, very simple, just playing the chord. Almost everything in this uh, composition is within the chord. Uh, then you add the B flat. Bass, remember A over B flat, and you play this. Okay, you play the B flat bass along with the E string and then the B string. So it's A, A over B flat, and then E. Again, same lick, the same country lick that I played in the intro, at the end of the intro, the same lick. So, so far we've got this. A. A over B flat. E. Uh, no, I was wrong. Excuse me. Sometimes when you play things slowly and break them down, you forget some notes. It's not the same ending. This time you play this. Um, <clears throat> on the E. Chord at the end after the A and the A over B flat, you play the second string and the third string, and if you want, you can add the E string. Okay? Okay, because it's yeah, are you got a friend in me? Okay, and you can add this note just to add a small flavor to the chord. Now this. Um, which is basically the same thing without the B flat bass. Um, A, again, you play second string, first string, second string. Then E, and you play second string, third string. 
Okay? Basically, same thing you did before. Now, G sharp and C sharp minor. Now, on the G sharp, you play, uh, the melody is the B string twice. Uh, so I harmonize with the G string. And it, of course, you play the bass uh, along with the first note. You play them twice. And then C sharp minor, same thing. You play uh, the B string, harmonize with the G string if you want, and play the bass. Okay, so it's... Okay, so... And then A and E again. Only this time with a small difference, you play the A the same way again. Second string, first string, second string. Then on the E, you play first string, second string. Instead of second string, third string. It's just um, down one string physically, up one string musically. Okay, that's it. That's the only difference. Now on the G sharp and the C sharp minor, you play the E string. Actually, you can leave the E string out of the C sharp minor chord. Uh, just play uh, play the G sharp chord along with the E uh, strings, so you can pick strings one, two, and three. And then on the C sharp minor, play what you played before. Play the second string and the third string. Okay. Okay. So what we have so far is this. Now comes a really nice line, is this, okay, it's A, you play the, um, the second and third strings along with the A bass, then you play the same thing with the B flat bass, A over B flat, okay, so it's, and then you play E, and you play the same strings, so it's E over B, you play the B uh, note on the A string, you don't play the E bass, so it's E over B. And then you play the third string again. Okay, got it? I'll explain in a minute. Again, A, E over B flat, E over B. Okay, what we've created here, what Rand Newman created here, what I arranged here is a, um, a chromatic movement on the bass. It's Got it? Again, a blues, a blues cliche. Again, it's um... Wait for it. Okay? The turnaround into B. That's where he took it from. Um, so, but it's an ingenious use of that particular bass walk. Um, okay, now that I explained uh, what I think was Randy Newman's uh, source for this little line, um, then you play the G sharp and the C sharp minor exactly the same way you played it the last time with the E string on the G sharp without the E string on the C sharp minor. Okay, so it's... You can, um, you can also um, play second string, first string on the G sharp. And then you create this little line. You don't have to. And then... Um, we're at the end of the A part already, didn't notice. Then it's this. Okay, and then, and then again. Okay, that's it.
that's it. You can go home. I'm kidding. Um, F sharp over C. Oh, um, over C. F sharp seven over C sharp. Uh, that's a long ass name. Um, and you play. Okay. Uh, you play the A string. You play the first string, second string, and third string. Then B seven with an open E string, and you play the first string and the second string, and then you play E. You can play the entire chord, you can play the E string alone with the bass. Okay, so the line is. And then you play C sharp seven. Um, just like C7, up one fret, remember, uh, with the bass on four, on C sharp. And you play strings two, three, four, and five. Okay? Entire chord. And then, again, F sharp, seven over C sharp. Same way. B7 with an open E string. Same way. E with with the E string, same way, and you're done with the A part, and then this again, okay, so let's play from the top. the entire line he says okay but I think this is too much and then A okay it's just A and you play um, strings one two three then strings one and two again then E with the second string, and you can complete the this line, second string, third uh, string, first string. If you want, you don't have to. You can just end on the uh, second string. Then D sharp seven again. Okay, 
Okay, so it's practically the same as before. And then E. And then C sharp minor. Uh, on E, you play the E string. On C sharp minor, you play the B string. It's the same note. It's an E note. Okay? But the chord changes. So... in a minute um, why this is going on, um, on along with the lyrics uh, and then this it's F sharp 7 over C sharp again this time you play strings 2, 3, 4 and 5 and then you play an open B string and then you play B7 strings 2, 3, 4 and 5 Again, it's the same note, the open B string, that's the melody, and the chord changes. So, and then you have an entire bar of B7 to just play any way you want. Well, Just pass it along. Just play the, just play arpeggiated in any way that sounds good to you. It doesn't matter what you play. It doesn't matter. Um, so this. Every time you play an arrangement, it's best if you know the lyrics because then you know the timing of the line. Um, and some arrangements are difficult, so it helps to know the lyrics and then you can follow what you're playing. Um, so, A, D sharp 7, A, E, D sharp 7. F-sharp 7, the long chord, the long chord name, B7, okay? Got it? And then, this again. And you're done. You're done with uh, this arrangement of You've Got a Friend in Me. We haven't forgotten anything. No, we covered it all. So, before you go, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of lessons already up there, and I take requests, as you see. And um, I try to make the best arrangements I can, and the best lessons I can, and everything is for free and will always be free. All I ask in return is for you to share the lessons and let your friends, family, dogs... There's a second dog right here behind me. Um, your enemies, your imaginary friends, your cousins, your, um, I don't know, pen pals, uh, just tell them about Lick and Riff This so they can learn guitar as well. Uh, go to the website, download the tab, and there's a donation button if you want to give something back for the lessons. Um, I'd be very grateful for any donation, everything goes back to Lick and Riff to making time for these lessons, it takes time to shoot them, to edit, to make the arrangements, to practice the arrangements, uh, everything takes time and the more donations, the more time I can make to make lessons and it's my goal to make lessons every single day because I love doing this and um, that's, that's my passion, I love teaching guitar. So uh, if you can help me with that, I'd be grateful. If not, I'd be grateful for any um, any way you can help with Lick and Riff, mainly letting people know that it exists. You go practice this, get it under your fingers, and enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. That's the best uh, way to learn. If you enjoy what you're playing, then uh, you'll be playing it in no time. So have fun, and let me know how it goes, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching.